What's up, everybody? Matt here, and I wanted to bring you a special, special little review of Alien Romulus by Fidi Alvarez. It is out in theaters now, and so I'm going to talk some spoilers uh, real quick. Spoiler-free thoughts are that this movie is a great return to the Alien franchise. Sometimes you just have to go back to basics, like what Prey did, for example, for the Predator franchise, and really start fresh, and that's what this does. It returns it back to the basic it's a slow burn horror the slow burning dread it's a very not overly complicated plot at the same time but man it is great there's a lot of really great tense moments in this film the story makes sense the character development is really really awesome especially with david johnson as andy and callie spaney as rain and so spoiler free thoughts are that you should definitely watch this it's a great great addition into the alien franchise and i think fans are really going to enjoy this especially after the run of just not so great films for example but now let's go into spoiler free or spoiler thoughts i should say now i'm going to go into some spoilers here so if you don't want to get the spoiler thoughts go ahead go out go see it and come back whenever you do see it uh, but my spoiler filled thoughts are that this was a great movie now this movie opens up really well. It kind of gives us something that the Alien franchise hasn't necessarily done, and it kind of gives us life on what these colonies are like. So Rain, for example, and Andy, uh, David Johnson plays Andy. He is Rain's brother, but he is a synthetic, and something that's really cool is that their parents are died. That's not the cool part. Their parents are passed away. She goes up to say, hey, you know, I've done my hours, my time we should be able to get off and go to the planet Yagara. And however, they decide to change and say, no, you need to work in the mines for five to six years. So from that point, you see what life is like. They don't see the sun. And he's kind of like his only directive is to protect rain, which I thought was really cool. And it's a little bit different from like the, the murderous killer synthetics, for example, that we've really seen. And now they end up meeting up with their friends who they haven't seen in a while, you know, Tyler and Kay. Tyler's played by Archie Renault and Isabella Mercado plays Kay. And then we also enter Bjorn, played by Spike Fern, who is a, not the best character. You know, he's that character that you obviously hate. And then Eileen Wu uh, plays Navarro. So that's kind of our main cast. And their plan is to, hey, there is a spaceship coming overhead and up there we can get the cryopods and basically put ourselves in a cryo sleep and escape to you know freedom and give ourselves some freedom and i thought that was a really cool clever plot it's basically like very punk rock um to steal something from my friend sean from metalcore nerds he talks about being punk rock yeah it's a, it's a group of kids essentially saying let's make a better life for ourselves so they go up there they need andy because he's a whaling whaling synthetic and he goes on the ship with bjorn and tyler they get into the cryo room and now something they did at the very, very beginning was they found a rock which had a xenomorph in it. They brought it back and turns out this is that same ship. Now they go into the cryo room, they remove the cryopod and it shuts everything down. And that's where you see that, oh, they were housing all of the face huggers, which now begin to thaw. And it really starts to build up that heart racing dread feeling. And you're just like, oh, man. And the way they all attack in the water, it was very tense, very good moments there. Uh, there's a moment when Tyler almost gets, you know, taken out by a face hugger, and you're just like, oh God. And it shows it trying to input its, you know, tube down the throat. And you're like, this is this is nuts. It's great. And now they insert basically they're locked in the room, Andy, Tyler, Bjorn, and that's when, you know, Rain and uh Navarro come off to try to help them out. They find another synthetic, which I didn't really like. It's the torn in half, acid, all that stuff. You see something that happened on the ship. Didn't really like the CGI for this particular synthetic. However, they remove the module there, put it in Andy, and that kind of gives him the free passwords, but also starts to reprogram him. And you're just like, oh, man, that's crazy. And so they get out, barely escaping, but one of the face huggers jumps through and uh, ends up attaching itself to Navarro. And you're just like, damn, that's intense. So they talk with the synthetic and all that stuff. Basically, the synthetic's like, yeah, you know, explains the whole situation. Andy now is the rundown, knows what's going on. It's they were looking for a way, you know, humanity is dying from diseases and all this other stuff. And so they are out searching for the perfect specimen, so to speak, to basically, you know, move humanity forward. We kind of saw some of that, you know, like Prometheus and Alien Covenant and things. That's kind of like the Wayland Corporation's entire motive was to basically find a way forward except for what they did with this 
versus you know the engineers basically creating aliens to kill humans this is hey they're they took the blood from the aliens and things like that and they thought it would actually enhance humanity to be able to survive longer and push them forward thought that was super clever honestly that's a really clever way to enhance the franchise forward like that makes a lot of sense the storyline makes a lot of sense things obviously don't go great and dude the, the once they get back like obviously navarro now has an egg they they get the the face hugger off take her onto the ship bjorn and uh they bjorn and navarro escape andy and them andy needs to stop them because andy's like no don't let her on the ship and that's when chaos starts to things go downhill Turns out Kay is also pregnant. She is on the ship already asleep, wakes up, what's going on? They're kind of leaving. Things go south as the chest burster face hugger bursts out of Navarro. And that's where we get the Xen baby xenomorph. And it's this really tense scene that's bloody, starts to really bring in the horror aspect, man. And from that moment on, dude, the, the, you know, the xenomorph, they're very, very fast growing. And it, the, deaths in this movie are very awesome the way that some of these characters die you know it's all over there's no two deaths that are the same it's it's very very good and from that point man that the horror kicks in right you're now got the xenomorph out on the loose and it's stalking everybody it's killing everybody andy tyler and rain turns out like the the face huggers are tracking them they they have this tense moment going through there when things go south and they're running there your heart's racing thought that was really awesome the action is pretty great in this movie the soundtrack all of the the practical effects that they do seeing the alien the xenomorph back in action stalking our characters was absolutely phenomenal i thought i thought it was really great again returning to that basic back you know with sigourney weaver for example in the first alien when it does the same thing and that's thought that something really cool was again you care about these characters at this point they've done a really good job especially with andy who's at the beginning this you know he's the brother he's kind of like a stuttering synthetic and very easy to get beat up but once he gets that upgrade and finds out that now his new directive is to basically protect and do whatever for the company he becomes like the soulless synthetic again but andy's still kind of in there somewhere which i thought was really cool and you know rain's connection to Andy and those two were like the best characters loved their development. I thought the acting particularly uh, was, was really phenomenal. With David Johnson, because he had to go back and forth between being like this, you know, kind of scared kid almost, so to speak. Right. And then going to like this soulless robot. I thought that was great. I thought Callie played rain really well. You know, she was, you know, the horror, the shocking, they're being chased by these xenomorphs. There's really cool sequence, man, for example, you know, where Rain and Andy are backed up against the wall and the anti-gravity kicks in after Rain's like, all right, I got this anti-gravity, the xenomorphs, there's a ton of them at this point coming and they got the gun, low wep or low ammo. And now they, she, she basically shoots her way out and there's like this acid floating and they got to float through zero gravity around the acid from the aliens. I thought that was really tense. They did a really good job building up the suspense in that moment, for example, and the CGI for that part was really cool. And I thought that was actually really clever. We haven't really seen that before in the alien franchise. They really played into the acid bit and used the acid as a tool versus just like killing a person. No, they, it actually affected the environment around them when the gravity kicks back in the acid burns a hole into the ship, for example, and that, you know, another plot device moving forward. So I thought that was great. There's a scene in the elevator shaft that I thought was very tense as they're trying to get their way out. And then, man, they kind of blend it again from like Prometheus and the engineers. There is that sequence with Kay where she's supposed to have a baby. Well, turns out she had been thought to be dead. She's back. She makes it to the ship with the blood because they want to take the blood back to the colony and be like, here you go. But as we find out, the blood from the xenomorphs, it uh, does things and it isn't exactly going to save humanity. And so she ends up giving birth to like in a really gross, tense sequence as they're about to go into cryo sleep. Andy, K, Rain, they made it. They think they're going to be good. Not so much, man. And she gives birth to this egg and you're like, what the hell is going on? And then enter like this human xenomorph hybrid. And you're just like, this is disgusting. It's really cool. It's gross and it, it plays on to again. They they did a really good job. This is a love letter to the franchise. They went ahead and brought 
ideas from all of the alien movies and made it work in a really clever way. And so it builds up another and, you know, rain as a kind of a final girl, if you will, in this horror film, she's pretty badass. She's not like this, you know, military girl, all this stuff. She's like Sigourney Weaver kind of was right. She had to work her way up and became that badass. And that's kind of what rain did taking the reins, if you will, ha uh, on this franchise. She's, she's very clever, uses the, environment that she has to kind of save the day and of course at the end of the day it's andy and uh rain andy's pretty damaged he she puts him in cryo sleep to help save him as they go to yagara and uh they don't like robots there apparently um so but she's like you know what screw it she takes this chip out they're gonna figure out it's gonna be the two of them and that's kind of where the movie ends and now there's so many things that they could do going forward with this film it opens up a lot of new ways it refreshes the franchise in my opinion and again, I, I really enjoyed it. Honestly, one of my top five favorite movies of the year. Uh, this list is going to be really hard come year's end because I've seen there's so many good movies coming out this year that aren't like superhero movies. But Aliens Romulus really returns it to that basics. And it's excellent. It's a love letter. I want to see more from this franchise. This is exactly what it needed. It was very refreshing. Um, I cannot say enough good things there. Like I said, CGI was kind of wonky, but I thought the story was great. I thought overall the character development, the characters you actually cared and they really built up the suspense and the horror that they, they did a really, really excellent job with that. So I highly recommend seeing this. If you have seen it, please in the comments, let us know your thoughts. Um, that has been kind of my spoiler free slash spoiler filled talk about alien Romulus. If you've seen it, please let us know, man. Uh, I, I love this movie. I want more, but and if you want more of our reviews, Go ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, do me a favor. That's how we can help the podcast grow and our YouTube channel grow and go from there. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We will see you soon. I am Matt. This has been a Hops Geek News movie review. Cheers.